Good evening, everyone. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Gadigal of the Eora Nation, and pay respects to elders past and present. I'd like to extend my solidarity and my respect to any First Nations people in the room. This land was not without a people. This terra was not nullius. Sovereignty was never ceded. This land is, was, and always will be Aboriginal land. And I do hope that we take that acknowledgement beyond the symbolism um, and take that practice, the practice of decolonizing, into our daily lives um, in whatever small way that we can. I'm Sarah Saleh. I'm your MC for the evening. I'm a poet, a writer, and an activist, and I dabble, wear a couple of different hijabs, so you might see me doing different things. Okay, now you got the joke, great. <laughs> so, without further ado, I would like to introduce uh, Helmi, who is the co-founder and current convener of BDS Australia. He himself is an Australian-Palestinian refugee, and he's the only person out of his eight-member family who was born outside of Palestine when they were forced to flee Yaffa in 1948. So please give a warm welcome to Helmi as he comes up on stage to talk to you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much, Sarah. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of BDS Australia Executive Committee, I would like to welcome you all tonight and thank you really for being here to, with us to, to listen to Professor uh, Richard Falk. I would like also, of course, to uh, thank the New South Wales Parliament friend, Parliamentary Friends of Palestine for helping us in securing this uh, uh, hall. This is the House of Australians in New South Wales. Thanks so much for MP David Showbridge. I don't see him yet. Uh, he and his staff provided excellent support. I would like to thank all the MPs in the same group, the Parliamentary Friends of Palestine, Shaukat Maslamani MP, and of, um, uh, MP um, Linda Voltz and uh, Paul Lynch. Uh, some of them are overseas. Uh, I have also to acknowledge the presence of a long-standing uh, supporter for the Palestinian cause, Greens Federal Senator Lee Rianon. <laughs> no matter what we say, how much we say thank you to Lee, I don't think we'll give her enough. She has done a great job for the Palestinian cause. I would like to welcome the Palestinian ambassador, Izzat Abdel Hadi, dear Izzat, you know, we know that you have done a great job to support the Palestinians, uh, pro-Palestine civil society in Australia. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> and of course, a big thank you to Professor Richard Falk for accepting our invitation to visit us and give this talk this tonight. This visit did not go without attempted interference by Israel lobby. We expected them to be annoyed, but we did not expect, expect them to go that low to the extent to write to the immigration uh, minister, asking him to, re to revoke or, or refuse his, uh, vis his visa. Uh, not only that, they've asked uh, the, the New South Wales Parliament to reconsider hosting this event what is called Jewish Students, Australian Jewish Students Union, which I think should be called Zionist Union rather, has, has asked to, uh, s protested on a, a talk that Professor Richard Falk is giving tomorrow in University of Sydney. By the way, if you don't want to know more details about this event, there are flyers on your seats. If you like to listen, that might be, have some academic uh, twist there as well. The Zionist lobby launched an unethical attack on Professor Falk. This man, who says I am a proud Jewish American, who is an eminent global reference point in international law, whose CV you will hear more about when Professor Stewart Rees introduced him tonight, was described by, this, by the lobby, quote, to have consistently maligned Israel with anti-Jewish and anti-Semitic trope. This man is Jewish. He is accused to be anti-Semitic. They also 
sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a joke. They also called, uh, yeah, and the, the folk, Mr. Professor Folk uh, wrote back to the Australian Jewish News, which was the voice where all these attacks has happened. And in a detailed reply, he took point by point, accusation by accusation, and re uh, rebuked them all. But this reply was never published, nor the 400 word summary that they said we have to commit to the, uh, to the editor's guidelines have been published so far. Of course, this lobby doesn't engage, doesn't apologize. They just know how to attack. If you are interested in these details, we have published a media release with links to our website, on our website. But all of that is really details, is merely details. The fact is, this lobby, like the government they defend, bases its policies on distorted facts at times and on straight up, on, on, and on straight up lines at others. Therefore, they get panicked, really scared, when someone with such high credibility and caliber tells the truth with facts and provides political analysis in a highly professional manner. This professional manner for, of Professor uh, Falk is represented by when he wrote back to the Australian Jewish News and said, I have admitted, admitted before to have done human errors and I did uh, not have the best judgment in another case. But all of this is immaterial to the lobby. Let me tell you another example that is very telling about the uh, credibility of this lobby. As you may have heard, prior to the federal elections we had in May, another long-standing supporter to the Palestinians, the former federal MP Melissa Park, was forced to withdraw as an LLP candidate in Western Australia. In a TV interview, the Australian newspaper Foreign Auditor, who is part of the lobby, of, uh, of course, do you think he is part of the lobby when he is in the Australian? I think he is. Said that the statements by Ms. Parks about the actions of the IDF at a checkpoint was totally fabricated. He forgot to do his homework. The incident where a Palestinian woman was forced to drink from a bottle of bleach she carried turned out to be not only true, but on the public record. It was in the age newspapers at the time it occurred and was reported by Reuters. Commenting on the same incident, the co-director of Executive Council of Australian Jewry tried to be more credible. So he went on and said that there were circumstances that exonerated the IDF soldier. There are, there are reasons to exonerate someone, to force someone to drink, to drink bleach. In, in, in the legal system of the Australian, uh, of the uh, Israeli system. I must make, anyway, a joyful point today. Against all their haspara for the character assassination of Professor Falk, using his words, here he is tonight, talking to audience who cares about justice, equality between all humans. Let's give this an applause. I'd like to tease this. <laughs> This is my genuine request to the Israel lobby. Please stop com conflating anti-Zionism, especially anti this ultra-right Israeli government mad policies with anti-Semitism. Stop using this rusty and blunt knife at every juncture. I say that not because I care about your credibility or the apartheid state you defend, but because I care about my cause, about my people, getting their freedom and human rights which have been granted to them by international law, waiting for the free word to have the courage and stamina to tell Israel enough is enough. To be clear, anti-Semitism is dangerous and disgusting. It is an enemy of the Palestinian cause. Holocaust denial or, minimize, or minimization, Jewish stereotypes and poisonous conspiracy theories must be fought by all people committed to a just cause for the, Palestinian, for the Palestinians. But so must false claims of anti-Semitism used, uh, used to try to silence and confuse people, whether people in the streets of Sydney and M MPs in this parliament, in Canberra, in London, or anywhere in the world. The struggle of the Palestinians will always be about respect, national justice, and equal human rights. BDS Australia will work 
not to work, will not be distracted by false claims, and will continue to, to bring eminent contributors to justice, such as Professor Falk, to Australia. Thank you.